Okay, so I'm Mary Potter Kenyon, and tonight we are going to talk about what can Harrow help a reporter out do for you. And this um, discussion applies to anybody who is an author or an illustrator, and if they want their name out there before the book comes out, after the book comes out, because people like to look and find out more about the authors that they enjoy. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And, okay. So if you Google me, and you'll wanna Google yourself at some point because your readers will Google you, Publishers Google you, people Google you. They'll, they'll be doing some searches and you want to be found in those searches. So if you Google Mary Potter Kenyon, up will pop pages and pages of things. Most of the first several pages apply to me, things I've written or things that I've been featured in. And that's what you want for yourself. That's what you want for yourself. But one thing, eventually when your book is out, if you go on Google and you Google yourself and right here is an information section. You can see, you can barely see it on the screen, but down at the bottom, it says claim this knowledge panel. You don't have control at first what pops up in that knowledge panel about you, but you can claim that knowledge panel. They're going to have you walk through steps where you will show your driver's license and you'll fill out papers to make sure they know that you really are the person that you're Googling. And then you can choose which picture would pop up in there. You can choose the bio that pops up in there. It took months for mine to go through. So there was a picture I didn't even really like that was popping up at first. And as you can see, my books also pop up when and my Facebook page and my Twitter. So that's one thing you can actively do as a person um, as soon as as you start appearing in Google searches. So there you can see there's there's um, my Facebook page pops up, um, my website pops up, which is also a WordPress blog. And it, it keep scrolling, you will see stories and different things. You can even um, click up here where it shows the news and it will show when the news, when your story, your name appears in the news, this is what I, what happens when I click videos because I've done some YouTube videos, I've done some YouTube interviews, so those will pop up, so people can start finding you, and that's what you want. You want your name to show up in some of these places. This is Bain search engine. When I when I type my name in, you can see this is the picture that was appearing for quite a while on the Google search, which I don't like as much. It's it's quite it's like at least 12 years old, but any search engine you want to appear in, and here is how you can do that. So help a reporter out is not just for journalists who are writing stories and authors who are writing stories, but for you as a source. You are an expert in whatever you write about. If you are writing about ADHD, or if you're writing a a board book, you might be an expert as a parent, but also if you want to write a, um, a book that's based on facts and figures and you want to quote some people, then you can also register with H-A-R-O, Harrow, as a journalist or as an author. So what it does is it provides journalists with a database of sources for upcoming stories. What happens once you register is three times a day, you get an email. And I have a handout that you can request from me at marypottercanyon at gmail.com. And I will send you the handout, which kind of tells you some of these things. So you register on H-A-R-O, which is www.helpareporter.com. Three times a day, an email will come to you like 5.30 in the morning, 12.30 in the afternoon, 5.30 in the afternoon, and that's Eastern time, Monday through Friday. And in that email will be general category, lifestyle category. The general category is where I often find things that I'm qualified to, um, to speak to. 
So let's say, Steve, your board book, before your board book comes out, if you want to become known as an author, you would um, answer questions maybe about parenting or maybe about babies or maybe just whatever you are an expert at. And then pretty soon your name would start being quoted. If you have a website, it can link to your website. If you have a Facebook page, it can link to your Facebook page. Not all of the things you get quoted in will there be links in, but some, a lot of them there will be. Um, the majority I've had links in, so people will be, I send them where it will be most helpful to, like I might even send them to my Instagram sometimes, depending on what I'm answering. So um, as you can see, there's soul food restaurant chefs they were looking for. Um, the, the one I had printed out um, that uh, you can request. They are looking for a favorite Bible verse. Another um, author is looking for people who suffer from anxiety and they want um, people to answer that. You can also request only the general or only the lifestyle because sometimes there's 140 requests three times a day. That's a lot of stuff to sift through. But I have discovered, because I wanted to really limit it for a little while there, that I was missing a lot when I just put general and lifestyle. There, lo and behold, there'd be something in finance that applied to my couponing book, or there'd be something in um, one of the other categories that I was actually qualified to answer. So I went back to getting, uh, depending on the day of the week, sometimes Friday is not as many, sometimes Monday there's tons. So, and I don't, and I work full time. So I can't look at noon all the time or at 1230 or one o'clock. And um, it matters. It matters because they have shown the, their studies that the sooner you answer, the better chance you're gonna appear in one of those articles because those people might collect 30, 40 and then stop looking at their emails. So we, all, we can only do what we can do. So I look in the morning, I look in the late afternoon and during my lunch break, I might take a peek and see what there is. And I've gotten pretty good at just skimming through them really fast. So what happens when we start looking at some of these? This is a very easy way for us to get our name out there. Yes, we can write articles for magazines and get our name that, out that way. We can get on blogs and get guest blogs or do our own blog or whatever it is and get featured on podcasts. There's so many ways we can get our name out there. But this is just a really easy way to get our name out there. Uh, and I have seen an uptick in sales after some of these come out. I have, especially with my coupon crazy book, which came out in 2013, that's a long time ago. But when I was getting featured in some of these articles about couponing, about saving money, I was seeing royalty checks that I hadn't seen for a while. So I know it works. So here I appeared on Red Book Magazine just because Help a reporter out was looking for people with birthdays ending in zero. And I was going to be turning 60 that year. And so I went, I finally a benefit to turning 60. So I answered and it's, it's pretty nice to be seen on redbook.com. And I even got a call from a radio station because they were looking for people that were turning 60 the same year. And so I got on the radio station too. Authority Magazine is another one that's always looking for, they're looking for authors, they're looking for people who are out there in the business world. Um, I think the one that I'm going to be answering next is about people who have um, been affected by loss. And so I have a book on grief, I have a couple books on grief. And so I'm obviously going to answer and fill out that questionnaire. Now these questionnaires for this particular one, show up on Thrive Global. They show up on uh, medium.com. So I, people can click right there. I think it's right there and go right to my book or right to my website. And of course the picture they chose there, I am holding my book. So that helps too. So this just gets us exposure. And here's another one it looks very similar because they're using the same picture. It's also Authority Magazine, but that one's on Thrive Global. So you can see they use the same picture. 
but they changed the headline. So it looks like a totally different article, but it's actually the same article with pulling different things out for the headline. How to develop mindfulness. That doesn't have a lot to do with most of my books, but my creativity book has a chapter on mindfulness. And so I could pull something out for that. Following your heart. Um, I've followed my passions. So what happens when I get featured on articles like this? Anybody who reads these articles gets a glimpse at what I'm writing, what my book is. I'll, I'll mention the book or books several times if it pertains to the topic. I don't shove my book in to all of the answers that I, um, when I reply to something. So if I'm replying to something, but I will give them my link so that the link is there if they want to use it or if they decide to use it. Here's a um, web site where I was quoted on creativity. So here you can see me in the, right there in the middle, author Mary Potter Kenyon. If you click on that blue, it takes you right to my website. So anybody who's looking about creativity on the internet will see that this person who was quoted, they can click on there and then they see, oh, she's got a book about creativity. Here's another one about practicing gratitude. And we've got another of our familiar authors right there in the second paragraph, Carla Marie Manley is up there being quoted about gratitude. Mary Potter Kenyon down here being quoted about gratitude. You can click on her and it'll take her to a website. You can click on me, it'll take, me, take you to my website. Tips for coping with grief. I told you I have a couple books out about grief. This one right there, you can click and it takes and it mentions my book, Refine from Fire. Here's when they were looking for people who were couponers. And this was when I was seeing the royalty checks for Coupon Crazy again. It kind of stopped those royalty checks. I start getting quoted about couponing. Those sales start coming again. This was one where she ended up calling me and it was a huge interview and it, it was actually several interviews over the phone and over and over in this article, Mary Potter Kenyon says, Mary Potter Kenyon, author of Coupon Crazy, Science and Savings and Stories Behind America's Extreme Obsession. Over and over she was quoting me in this article. Here's, you can see, that's a clickable link to my book. Reader's Digest. I've been, that was like a dream for me as a, a writer is to someday get in Reader's Digest. Well, I've been on readersdigest.com several times and in the, the print magazine several times because of these queries that I've been answering. Again, that clickable link. And here's a recent Reader's Digest. This was actually in the print magazine about an unlikely friendship. Well, there was no way I could really fit any information about my book in there, but it says I'm an author and it says that my unlikely friendship with a 88 year old man is with another author who's my mentor. So if somebody got curious and thought, huh, who is that Mary Potter Kenyon? I want to figure it out. They could, they could find me on the internet because I'm, I appear in Google searches. So this is a young woman who has not had anything published yet. She's been writing children's stories. She wants to get published. She took this program from me and she actually followed my advice and got signed up on the Harrow site. Her, she had, she did a little um, website. So this is her website that pops up in the Google search. And then she's got a Facebook page, she's got a Twitter, she's doing all the right things. And when she started answering a few of these Harrow queries, she started getting quoted in some parenting magazines and some parenting articles. And what happened is people started coming to her website that she had just built and started reading her blog and she's starting to get some followers so that when she does get her children's book published, she will already have a presence on the internet. And that's what we want. That's what we want as authors. This is my Instagram, which also will pop up if you Google me. 
it, I'm fairly new to Instagram, but I found out that's where all the creative people hang out. So we can pick and choose which of the things on the internet we want to do. There's Twitter, there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's things I don't even know what they are. But what makes sense is to choose the ones where we're going to put our time is where our readers would find us. And so when I knew my creativity book was coming out, I knew that's where people hung out. The creative people hang out on Instagram because it's all about pictures. It's all about images and what they are making and what they are doing. So once in a while, I'll pop a, I'm using Canva to make some images with some of the blurb endorsements for my book. I'll, I do random things about steps that I'm walking up when I'm hiking, just, just some fun stuff that people will maybe start following me. Goodreads is another place you're going to want to sign up. You're going to want to register on Goodreads as an author and as a reader, because as a reader, you start building up, you know, what are you reading and read what you write, read the, read the kind of stuff you write and put those books on good reason show because you don't want to be just a salesperson. You want to be able to sell your books, but you don't want to be just a salesperson. You don't want to fill your whole Facebook page with ads about your book or your Instagram with just about your book or your good reads with just about your book. You want to get a relationship with your readers, a relationship with um, potential readers. And you want to be on Goodreads because you want your book not to appear just on Amazon or just on some of the book sites, but also on Goodreads because people will start giving you ratings and then your book will start popping up if you have friends on Goodreads and they click want to read your book and they better click want to read your book then other people, their friends will see, oh, what's that book that they want to read? Oh, I think I'm going to put that onto my, my to read list. And then they'll do like what I did during the pandemic when I suddenly needed books to read and the library was closed. I went to my to read list. What do I want to read? And I started purchasing some of those books on Amazon because I wanted to read some of those books and I couldn't even get to the library. So they get Christmas money. They'll go to their to read list and maybe buy your book. And then at some point, you might want to do a giveaway for your book on um, Goodreads. So I actually did this twice, once before my book came out and once after my book came out. And people were clicking, want to read, want to win their giveaway. If they enter your giveaway, then they're automatically adding that book to their to read list. And that's good for you because then your book gets more exposure. So these, this does cost money to list your book as a, as a giveaway. So you have to decide if it's worth it. I think it's fairly cheap advertising because by the end of this giveaway, it was over 2000 people that had clicked on this um, as wanting to enter. And that means over 2000 people saw my book, over 2000 people's friends, their friends saw them clicking, want to read. This is what I'll be talking about in May as an author, how you can start doing programs related to your book. Whatever your book is, children's book, adult book, there are programs you can design and um, get the word out there and you can do them online. I mean, I never did before, but you can do them online and I will, I will share with you how you can do that. So when you get registered with Harrow, and I'll try to um, give you time for questions after this, but when you get registered and you start getting these e emails, you're going to look at them carefully. You're going to look at them fast like I do. Otherwise, you'd spend, you know, 140 questions. It's easy to see, okay, I'm not qualified for that. I'm not qualified for that. Oops, what's this? You know, they're looking for, sometimes it's the strangest things and you might be qualified Something I answered yesterday, they now are asking me to do a presentation for them. So it's just like you don't always know where it's going to lead. So you're going to evaluate it. Am I qualified for this? Sometimes they want only doctors, only lawyers, only parents, only therapists. It's wasting your time and their time. 
if you're saying, well, I think I'm, you know, I've got this, this, and this, I know this, but you're not qualified for it. They're, you're not what they're asking. So don't just try to blitz all of the queries, but to look, are, am I really qualified to answer this? You want to respond quickly. So if I see it at one o'clock and it, I can see that it was sent 15 minutes before that, I feel pretty safe in still responding. I've responded as much as a day later. I don't even think I've ever gotten a bite when I've responded a whole day later. I've, got, I've gotten a bite hours later, but the most times that I've appeared and quote, been quoted is when I responded within the first hour after that email came out. So you want to respond quickly. You want to send the perfect pitch. So look, look at their question carefully and um, pitch it as best you can and as short as you can, because you don't want to send them a huge long email. They're probably not going to read it if they are getting 40, 50 emails for their query and the other people just sent this nice little piece that they can cut and paste and use in their article because very often that's what they do. So I send it like a quote. First, I tell them who I am, um, my position at work, if it, if it fits. I tell them I'm a grief counselor, if that fits. I tell them I'm an author if, most of the time, and if that fits, especially. And I gear it towards whatever book it is. If they're asking about money questions, I gear it towards my coupon crazy. If they're asking questions related to grief, I gear it towards Refined by Fire Expressive Writing for Healing. If it's about creativity or anything, even possibly related to creativity, which could be mindfulness and gratitude and anything that makes us more creative, then I gear it for that book. So you want to look at the question, make it as easy as possible for them to use your answer. You have to go through their link in the Harrow email. You can't email them privately. You can't send any attachments. You can later if they're asked for them, but through Harrow, the attachments are just disposed of. They don't, they don't go through. So you wanna make sure you don't do that. Once in a while, they'll ask for a picture in the body of the email. You wanna stay on topic. Whatever they're asking for, that's what you wanna give them. And you wanna give it to them in the easiest way possible for them to use it. And you don't want to just be a salesperson. They hate that. They don't want to just see, I'm the author of blah, blah, blah. My book is for sale, blah, blah, blah. And then your answer to their question is way down at the bottom. You want, to, you can have a link, put your link in there. A lot of times they use the link. And like I said, you want to make the, you want to make your answer to their question like a quote. I actually have cut and pasted quotes that I've sent to one place that they didn't use it word for word to another place to save myself some time. So I save in my, in my, I have a folder, Harrow folder in my email and I keep track of what I'm sending and I keep track of what's being published and the quotes that have been used. I will sometimes just cut and paste what I said for very similar question. You wanna make sure that um, they have your website at the bottom any of your social media handles. That doesn't mean they'll appear in the article, but you just want to give them the chance to look who, who is this person who's, if they want to use you for, um, like this person who emailed me yesterday from yesterday's quote, she wants to use me to do a program. She must have, I'm sure she didn't say that to everybody. She must have Googled me or at least clicked on some of the, the links I sent her. And like I said, keep those pitch responses. Just because one doesn't use it doesn't mean somebody else won't use it. So does anybody have any questions? You'll have to unmute yourself if you're muted. If I could just quickly comment. First of all, thank you. This has been so helpful. Yeah. Um, but also I think Harrow is just, it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. I know a lot of authors who will sign up for it and then will the week later get really frustrated and email me saying, I can't believe you expected me to look at it. So I do want to just say for anyone watching the recording too, it's okay if you don't even read the newsletter every day. If you miss a couple of days, there's always going to be more prompts and more opportunities. So 
I'd rather have people subscribe and look at it even once a month and maybe catch something um, than feel like they have to stick to a crazy, unreasonable schedule and look at every single prompt every single day. Um, so that was all I wanted to say is I don't want people to feel overwhelmed because it is a lot. <laughs> That is right, Kate. That is why when I was given the advice to use it probably six years ago or seven years ago, it did overwhelm me and I ignored it for about two years and I deleted everything. I stopped. But once I realized what was happening, because it was it was around Christmas time and a lot of questions about finances and saving money. And mm -hmm. I thought, well, this is easy. I, I've got coupon crazy out and I started answering. And then once I saw royalty checks for the book that had not been giving me royalty checks for a while I thought oh my gosh this is this is the only thing I'm doing different right now I'm right. not doing my couponing workshops right now so this is like it's it makes a difference and so now it's kind of fun and I've learned to really skim very quickly mm -hmm. uh, and so but you're right and what I do is if I have a day like I'm gone and I'm not able to look at any of them I actually delete them without looking at them because I don't want to waste my time. And I'm, like I said, I've never seen an article come out with one of my quotes if it was a day later that I answered. So I just think, okay, I don't, we all only have a certain amount of time. I just, I won't make myself crazy by looking at the ones that I missed because, right. yeah. That totally makes sense. That's a really great perspective because it can get frustrating too if you're mm -hmm. looking through one from yesterday and you see the perfect topic for yes. you. <laughs> you think, oh my gosh. And I know I could keep, I could try anyway, but it's just like, there's only so much each person can do. Absolutely. Maybe Mary, is, is there a fee for a... Uh... No, there is not. Even better. It doesn't cost us anything but our time. Does it have settings to refine what kinds of prompts you're sent? Like, can you set up keywords or anything like that? Not keywords. You can set up mm -hmm. only to have life, lifestyle, or you could set up only to have finance or you could set up to only have general, which general is where I find most of mine. But when I did do that and then went back, I saw how many I was missing. I was missing quite a few. There is a way you can go in there and look and see how many you responded to. And it will, some of the people will click that they used you. So you can actually go back and say, you can see where you've been sending it. Not everybody who uses your quote lets you know they used your quote, which is kind of tough because uh, then it's it's kind of a, oh my gosh, search and find. If you Google yourself once in a while and then you click on news, you might see something that nobody told you you appeared in. I have that happen once in a while. And it's, it's kind of fun, but it's nice to know that they used you because then you can share it on your Facebook page or your LinkedIn. Yes, Steve? Yeah. Uh, once you join, is there like pressure to like keep using it or do you, can you just join and then use it sporadically or no one cares, right? I got it for three years before I started using it. So it was in my email and I would just delete it. I mean, cause I just didn't see the point. I thought this is too much. This is 140 emails. Well, 140 little things, little queries each three times a day or 70 or 80. And then that, that part can feel overwhelming. But no, you could sign up, you could try it a few days, you don't see anything that you're uh, qualified for, ignore it for a while, try it again. But um, I would specifically try to look for things that might get your name out there, whether it's as a parent, as an author, as an illustrator, whatever it is. It doesn't have to be specifically about your book. You just want your name to start appearing. Do you find that when people um, reply to your pitch? Do they, are they usually looking to set up an interview or do they just use a quote from your pitch and go from that? Or like, what kind of, what do you see the most? The, ma the majority of the time, it's just my quote appears. And sometimes mm -hmm. a few of my quotes in one article, every once in a while, they'll ask if they can, um, like one wanted me to record my God wink moment on her website she said I loved your god wink moment go here record it and it just appeared on a podcast the other day her little radio show and it was like minute 26 until minute 34 or something was me talking about these god winks now that one might not do anything I think I I made sure I mentioned books somehow somehow I, I mentioned it but the the one about um 
saving money and couponing, that was several interviews. And then twice now I've been asked to do a program for somebody for their webinar or, or, or something. So you just never know what it's going to lead to. But the majority of the time, it's my quotes are appearing. And then that Red Book one was a, a phone interview too. It ended up being so. Oh, okay. It's good to know. That seems yeah. a little bit less um, of a giant commitment because I'm right. like, if I'm getting interviews and stuff, that's, that's yeah. a lot of time, but it's just a pitch. Yeah. And that's, oh, that's yeah. cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously interviews would be great. <laughs> yeah, they, they are. <laughs> I'm always excited when that happens. I will also say too, and I'm not sure if what your experience has been like with this, Mary, but if you see that a pitch is closing to responses or they just sent it out and you know that you won't have time to really send a full response you can just contact them with a brief bio and maybe like a couple very very short talking points or bullet notes and not your full answers and just let them know that you'd be willing to talk and then they can mm -hmm. reach out to you if you seem like a good fit um so that might be a way to like not lose an opportunity too if you're short on time yeah and another thing is if it does appear and they let you know they really, really want you to share it. They want you to share their article. So you share it on Facebook, share it on LinkedIn, share it on Twitter, whatever you are, whatever social media you use. And then they're more likely to use you again because they'll see. And I've got a lot of connections now on LinkedIn that were from people who quoted me. They're now connections. And so at some point, maybe if they're writing something else, I had a lady use me twice. And she actually contacted me the second time. And part of it might be because you're sharing some of their stuff on LinkedIn and Facebook and social media. Absolutely. Um, and just to follow up on that too, if you tag Familius when you are sharing, so where Familius talk on everything, um, we'll also repost. It can be, we have so many media links every time we put together the, the recap that unless we're tagged in things, it can be kind of hard to to really capture them all from authors. So if you make sure that you tag us, then we'll definitely be sure to share. Okay. Right. Any other questions? All right, well, I'm gonna close. And um, thank you all for, for coming here. As I said, in May, I'll be doing something that's May 13th called Get With The Program at 6.30 central time. And the get with the program, I come from a background of having been a librarian who scheduled programs and also an author who does a lot of programs based on the different topics of my book. And now as a program coordinator for a spirituality center. So I am always looking for good programs. Libraries are always looking for good programs. And if you haven't thought about it before, there is probably a program that somewhere in your book that you could put together and I'll talk a little bit about online programming too. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. Thank you. Thank you very much. This was great. Bye. <laughs>